Uh, it was chaotic. Uh, by the time we got there, the um, we got we got to the west side, and the uh, the Capitol had already been surrounded on the west side. So we actually had to fight our way through the crowd in order to join the defense proper on the dais, where uh, officers were already holding the line. Um, we. Uh, when we were marching up through the crowd, they were all shouting at us, calling us traitors, um, telling us to remember our oaths, uh, stuff like that. Eventually, they attacked us on our way up, so uh, our platoon got split up. Uh, fists trying to steal our equipment, pushing, hitting, kicking, that kind of thing. Uh, also, well, someone on a high upper level from where I was threw down something huge and metal and hit me in the head and some other officers. Thankfully, I had my helmet on, so um, did not disable me. However, uh, it might have resulted in a concussion. <laughs> um, and when we uh, when they attacked, I was um, the medical mask I was wearing at that time got pulled up over my eyes, and I got knocked to the ground. So they uh, at that point, I think they surrounded me and started uh, beating me. At, at that point, fortunately, a, a colleague of mine, Officer Chasen, was able to uh, get me back on my feet. So it didn't uh, didn't. Again, that part didn't disable me either, and we were able to push forward to the uh, defense proper on the day. As so this, that was one of the uh, three times that day where I thought, well, this might be it. You know, I might uh, this might be the end for me. <laughs> so after the, our defenses on the day is broke, we uh, we were battling, you know, tooth and nail for our lives. We ended up falling back to uh, hardened choke points in the building, like the tunnel there, where you know their numbers didn't mean quite so much. And um, so I went inside, put on my mask, and um, got down to the tunnel where they were throwing CS gas at us, or either they were throwing ours back at us, I don't know. But uh, since I had my mask on, the other officers who didn't retreated, and I pushed forward to the defense. And uh, we held the line there in that doorway. Um, just, I guess I got pinned through the small back and forth we had fighting for, uh, you know, every inch. And um, I had my arms pinned at that point. I wasn't able to defend myself. The, uh, yeah, I think you see someone in the video who um, rips my mask off, my gas mask. He's also able to rip away my baton, uh, beat me with it. And um, at that point, I was also you know, sucking in OC and CS gas. So uh, I was pretty disabled at that point. And I can do to defend myself at this point. So I just started screaming top of my lungs for them to give me a way out, give me a a line or a treat. Thankfully, someone was able to do that and I was able to extricate myself. The first time was uh, when I was surrounded and beaten outside. Um, the second time was when uh, our lines broke on the dais and they overwhelmed our, uh, our police line. The fighting broke out proper. One of, the, um, one of my assailants was able to get his thumb in my right eye and started gouging at it, so I thought I might have been, um, been disfigured at that point. Thankfully, I was able to get him off without any uh, permanent damage being done. I mean, I, I follow the news. I, I was extremely concerned about um, what I was reading, the uh, threats people were making. 
but I also know that um, I know that this isn't our first rodeo. You know, we uh, we handle the First Amendment demonstrations all this all the time. Obviously, I don't think anyone anyone who should have known expected it to get to this point. Otherwise, it wouldn't have gotten to that point. Um, but um, I also knew at the time when I was defending the Capitol that, you know, obviously this, this has got to be, I was thinking this has got to be the biggest news story in the world right now. And, you know, some of the most powerful people in the world are inside that building. So there's got to be backup coming. I just got to hold out as long as I can. I had the opportunity to give a surprise video conference with Emma on NBC4 with Pat Collins. And she was a real sweetheart, you know. She, um, I was, I was really touched that she thought to write a letter to me, and I was so happy to read it, and just, and uh, let her know that I was doing okay. And I think it meant a lot to everyone, all the officers who fought that day. So it was, she was, she was just a real sweetheart, and I was glad to be able to talk to her. Mm -hmm. We're not on your side. We're here to defend the law, and we're here to um, defend the people. So if you come back, it's going to be even worse. Um, we're, we're, we're not your, I had people shouting at me, are you my brother, are you my brother? I, um, I've also served in the National Guard and I had veteran, or alleged veterans telling me they, they fought for this country, we wouldn't hurt you. Um, I had conspiracy theorists and just everyone you could think of yelling at me saying, you know, why, why are you doing this? You're the traitor. And, you know, we're, we're not the traitors. We're the ones who saved Congress that day and we'll do it as many times as necessary. It's hard to, it's hard to say exactly what they thought because just the cognitive dissonance on display, and their zealotry was unreal. But they absolutely, some of them definitely thought that they would just walk right up and say, "We're here to arrest Congress," and then the police would say, "All right, let's go," and we'd all walk in hands in hands and just do whatever they wanted. But uh, that wasn't the case, and it will never be the case. I'm extremely fortunate. I, my uh, my X-rays were negative for fractures, and uh, CT scan didn't detect any internal bleeding. So um, I think I'm I'm pretty much all better. Thank all right. Still out sick, but I, I should be back to full duty in a few days. I was not in the hospital actually. I uh, I went to the clinic the next day, and you know I was I was walking like a 90 year old man for a week, but. Uh, other than that, um, I, my busted lip healed, um, my headache went away eventually, so you know, I didn't have any memory loss or any other, um, any other symptoms of a concussion. Um, my, every, all, the other, all the other injuries healed up, so I'm, I'm extremely grateful for how fortunate I was. I'm extremely proud of all the officers who were uh, out there fighting that day. You know, Not all the officers were as fortunate as I was in terms of injuries. My, uh, my sergeant, Sergeant Peak, actually, um, got his finger broken right off the jump when we got to the defense. He had bone sticking out of his finger, but he slapped a napkin on there and some duct tape and went back to work for four hours. And so he's a legend. You know, it's, it's hard to go through something like that and say it doesn't affect you. There's, um, I'm obviously, it's something I'm going to be thinking about for the rest of my life. But I think myself, speaking for myself, I've, I've got um, the discipline and the resiliency to keep coming back and just in general it was it was a it was an honor and a privilege to be able to be there and shut down those people that day so i'm looking forward to well not looking forward to it i am willing and able to do it as many times as i needed